Church. Good morning. Good morning. It's, good, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord today, and uh, it's always a privilege to be back. It's like a homecoming of sorts because, as Brother Steve mentioned, uh, this is where I got the call to ministry. And, uh, Amen. Brother Monroe was here at the time. He kind of took me under his wing, and I preached my very first sermon right here in this church. And so it's always a it's always a good thing to be able to come back here. Like I said, a homecoming of sorts. So. I want to thank you all for the opportunity to be here today for Preach the Word Sunday. Yes. You're going to hear some good preaching tonight because Brother Mark is just a powerful speaker. Yes. He always gets his word across very clearly and in a bold fashion. I always appreciate Brother Mark and his friendship. Amen. And I appreciate your pastor as well because uh, every time I've had a chance to sit under Brother, uh, Brother Steve's preaching and teaching, it always blesses me personally. Amen. And, and as preachers and teachers of the Word, we need that time as well to sit and be taught also. And so anytime I have the chance to invite Brother Steve to Beulah to come out and preach a part of our revival services or something like that, it's always a great blessing to have him and Sister Melanie mm -hmm. and his dear mother there in the congregation with us. Amen. So Brother Steve, you're doing a tremendous job here. I want to encourage you with that. I want to bring all of you some encouragement this morning. Let's turn in the Word of God this morning to the book of Acts chapter 18. We'll be in Acts chapter 18 this morning, in particular beginning in verse number 9. And if you'd like to take uh, your bookmark and place in your margin in 2 Timothy chapter 4, we'll kind of get there at the tail end of the message, uh, so to speak, in just a little while. But hold your place in 2 Timothy 4, but let's begin in Acts chapter 18, starting in verse number 9. We'll start there here in just a moment after prayer, uh, but suffice it to say that uh, we are in the thick of it now in terms of the timeline of the Apostle Paul's ministry and his missionary journeys, and there were many. Yes. And there were many obstacles in the life of the Apostle Paul. But one of the things that stands out um, most of all, maybe not uh, above all, but one of the things that stands out a lot of the time when I read about the life and times of the Apostle Paul is his no-quit attitude. Amen. And that no-quit attitude was not something that he was able to instill within his, within his own self. That came from the empowering and the energizing of the Holy Ghost of God. Right. And I want to remind you all today, before we begin and dive into this message this morning, that the same Holy Ghost that was moving and operating in the life of the Apostle Paul is the same Holy Ghost that abides in you today yes. if you're a child of the Most High Amen. God. Amen. Never forget that. Amen. And that's what, one of the things I want to bring about today. Not only encouragement from the way the Lord God was able to speak this encouragement, in particular the way the cross was able to speak directly in a vision to the Apostle Paul and bring about encouragement. But let me remind you something before we dive headlong into this today, that if the Apostle Paul, with all of his boldness and all of his standing on, on the truth of the Word of God, if he had difficulties and there were times where he felt discouragement, don't you know that we're going to feel discouragement as well? That's right. And sometimes we lose also, this is one of the things I pray the Lord uh, God allows me to bring out in this message today, I want to bring out the fact that we often lose sight of just how powerful the Lord God is. Amen. How capable the Lord God is. Amen. And all of the wonderful things that He's able to accomplish through us and through others. But how often we doubt. Amen. And how often we don't give God enough credit Amen. for the power and the glory that's due Him. That's right. And so having said all of that, basically in an introduction, and we'll talk more about this because we're jumping in the middle of a chapter, but I'm going to go back and give you the context in just a moment. Let's bow before the Lord of glory in prayer before we start reading. Father, I want to thank you for this beautiful day. And Lord God, I want to thank you for this opportunity here to preach the Word Sunday at Lulitzen Baptist. What a special uh, bunch of people this is. Amen. A special congregation here, Lord, who I, I walk in this church and every time I'm invited, you can just feel the energy. You can feel the love and the fellowship uh, thereof. Thank you, Lord. And God, that's a sweet, sweet fellowship. And God, we're, we're instructed in the Word of God to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together yes. because we need instruction. We need fellowship. Mm -hmm. We need to build each other up so that we can go out in uh, these church doors where the, the mission field begins right. and we can share what thus saith the Lord with a lost and dying world. And Lord, I've often likened it to a, a ball team that watches footage and prepares for their, their upcoming games. And they're watching and they're carefully studying and they're watching their opponents. But we need to come to the house of the Lord on a much grander scale and understand that there's a great enemy, Lord, right. who roars like a roaring lion, the Bible says, seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. And he knows that he can't have our souls, but he tries to discourage us on every hand. Right. And that enemy is the devil, Satan himself. 
But I'm reminded of what your word says, O oh Lord. Greater is he who is in me yes. than he who is in the world. Thank you. Amen. May these things that we bring out today in the life and times of the Apostle Paul be a great encouragement to us. Because as we said a moment ago, Lord, and we'll say it again, the same spirit that was abiding in the heart and life of Paul, energizing him, moving him in every direction, uh, ordering all of his steps, is the same spirit that abides with us. Thank you, Lord. And God, that, that alone, if we had no other reason, which we have countless reasons to celebrate today, but if that were the only reason, we'd be here giving you praise and honor and adoration. Lord, work through this message today. Continue to bless this congregation. Bless the leadership here. Thank you, Lord. Bless Brother Steve as he ministers the Word of Truth week in and week out. And Amen. Now you've called Brother Ernie to preach the Word. Energize him, Lord, in your Amen. spirit. Yes, Lord. And be with him, Lord willing, next week as he stands to minister your truth. And finally, and we want to pray for Brother Mark in advance, Lord, that you'll hide him behind this sacred desk as well here this evening mm -hmm. and prepare his heart to minister to these fine folks here at Lewis. We pray these things in Christ's name with all of God's people saying, Amen. 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 And amen. Let me jump in in verse number 9. Let me read these verses to you that I intend to preach from. And then I'll go back and give you some context because I like context. It kind of makes things a lot easier. Amen? Yes. We don't want to just jump in blindly. And so verse 9, Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by vision. Now he does this on several occasions in the book of Acts alone. And he often brings a word of encouragement as the Lord can and, and does. But this is what the Lord says. Watch this. This is Jesus himself speaking to the Apostle Paul. Do not be afraid, but speak. Do not keep silent. Why? Verse 10 tells you why. Because if you want to know the answers to the Word of God? Keep reading. Yes. The Bible is always building upon itself. Yes. Laying foundation upon foundation. Precept upon precept. Here's the reason why. For I am with you. And no one will attack you to hurt you. <coughs> For I have many people in this city. That's a threefold promise. I'm going to share that with you here in just a moment. And then, then verse 11 tells us how encouraging it was for Paul because he continued there for 18 months, a year and six months, teaching the Word of God among the Corinthian people. That's good. Let's back up and give some context here. So Paul is all over the map preaching and teaching and ministering the Word of God. He's had his shares of ups and downs like we all have. There's not a person in this room today who if you were to stand and give testimony about the past, something you've been through, it was very heartbreaking, no question about it, very difficult times, but you could rightly say that the Lord God has brought you through it right. as well. Yes, sir. That's an encouragement to all of us. Amen. And here's the fact about human life. Here's, a, here's just a, a common fact. If we're not walking through a difficult time now, chances are, right around the corner, a storm is a brewing. Yeah, that's right. And so we need to constantly be on our knees asking the Lord to guide us, Good. not only through the hardships of life, but even in the mountaintop experiences. That's right. Because a lot of times we'll get to that mountaintop and we'll say, well, now I'm out of the valley. I can take my focus off the Lord. Don't you do that. Amen. Keep focusing on the Lord God. Yes, sir. For He's worthy. Yeah. And He wants to be with you and show you His goodness even in the times where we think Everything's hunky-dory and there's no problems. Mm -hmm. But listen, that's a part of life and difficulties come. And again, if, they, if they've come for the Apostle Paul and he felt discouragement, you might say, well, that doesn't, doesn't sound like the Apostle Paul that I know it all. He's always bold. I mean, the man was stoned half to death at one particular point a few chapters back here, and he gets up and starts preaching again immediately. Yeah. Here's a man that you cannot stop and you cannot slow down. Amen. But there comes a time where all of us, Get in a rut, so to speak. You might call it the blues. You might call it depression. You might call it whatever you will. But there comes a time where all of us have these times of difficulty. Brother Steve, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Even as a minister of the Most High God, we get discouraged. Right. Thank God that His Word lifts us up. Thank God that we're able to go back and look at the prophets of old and see, for yes. example, Jeremiah called the weeping prophet that God promised to make him a fortified wall. Yes, sir. And a bronze gate that God would, would use him in a mighty, mighty way. That's good. Mm. And he continues to do that for all of us. He said, I'm not called to be a prophet. I'm not called to be an evangelist, teacher, preacher, preacher pastor. But you're a child of the Most High God. That's right. That's, yes, if sir. you think for one solitary second that you're a nobody, that you're just a cog in the wheel, so to speak, in God's plan, you're wrong because we're dealing with a very personal Amen. Lord God. That's Amen. good. Amen. It's so personal. 
that he cares about all the needs and the desires of your heart, but he longs for those needs and desires to line up with his will. Amen. And here's a man in the Apostle Paul whose will was directly lined up with the Lord God. And you know the Lord God brings about tests and trials and difficulties so that we will learn to trust him more. Amen. Amen. What does the old song say through it all? If I never had a problem, I'd never learn to trust in him. Yes, sir. And so we need to focus on the Lord God and how he loves us and cares for his own. When I look at these verses of Scripture, and I'm, I'm going to start, say, when are you going to start preaching, preacher? Here, just a minute. This is, just, this is for free. I'm throwing this in. No, I'm kidding. But the bottom line is, listen, when we look at these things, you say, oh, that was for the Apostle Paul. No, friend. Yes, the Apostle was a special office. It was a very high office to be called an Apostle, to be certain. Right. But what Paul went around teaching and preaching to all of the churches that he was a part of, was that the Lord God loves you just as much as He loves me. Yes, sir. And it was Paul who called himself the chief of sinners. That's yes. right. And so That's Paul good. had a great grasp and a great understanding of what grace is. Mm -hmm. Now let me give you the context. He goes into Corinth after being, being all over the globe, so to speak. He's, he's gone into places where the gospel's never been preached before. He's had his fair share of difficulties. We talked about him being stoned half to death and everything else you can imagine. I heard a preacher say a long time ago, when Paul got to a new city, he might as well have just gone up to the local officials and said, where's your local jail? Because I'm going to end up there anyway. Right. And so the Apostle Paul was just that kind of person. He didn't care what people thought about him. But again, discouragement does have its way of rearing its ugly head. But we can thank God for the discouraging times because we can look back and we can see how the Lord God moved and operated in those times. So he comes to a place called Corinth. Corinth was pretty bad. That's right. Corinth was so bad that they just, there was no hiding their sin. It was just paraded for everybody to see. There was no shame. Like many other Grecian places, it was, it was full of, of worship of idols and all sorts of sexual immoralities and drunkenness. In fact, when they had plays and, and performances back in those days, they'd often have the drunk character be played as a Corinthian. Because they were known to be the most heathenistic individuals that you could ever imagine. Right. Mm. That was also a big cut down back in those days. If you called somebody, you're acting like a Corinthian. Mm. Well, those, those were fighting words there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's something you just did not say to somebody. Right. So there was a lot of shame there. Not in terms of how they lived, because they were proud of it. But neighboring cities and towns and villages would look at these people and say, Man, that's an awful place. Yes. Mm. And for places that worshipped false deities already, to say that Corinthian or, or Corinth was an awful place, it must be pretty bad. <laughs> it must be really bad. Yeah. In fact, when Paul writes <clears throat> to the Corinthians later, he says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You don't have to turn here, but he says, When I first came to you, I came with much fear and trembling. Why? Because he was discouraged. He probably looked at the situation and said, Lord, I've been in some bad places. But this takes the cake. Yes. How am I supposed to minister to people in this place? Now, the Lord in chapter 18 gives him, he meets a husband and wife who are also leather makers and tent makers like he is. Aquila and Priscilla. You hear a lot about them after this because they become ministry partners with the Apostle Paul and fast friends. They even uh, took Paul in their home and he lived with them for a little while. And then we see Timothy and Silas come back into the picture. They've been gone for a period. They reunite with Paul here. So he's starting to get all of these little things back in place. But he's still down. It's good to be in fellowship with each other, isn't it? Right. It's good to lift each other up. And we need that. The church needs each other. Again, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. It's great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Yes, sir. But even sometimes we need a little extra boost, don't we? That's right. You say, Brother Matt, does God speak today? Well, the canon of Scripture is closed. That is in terms of new revelation. Right. So how does God speak to us? Well, you're holding it in your lap this morning. Amen. It's the infallible word of the Most High God. Amen. And if you wonder if God still speaks today, He speaks through His word. Amen. You can That's trust His word. It's That's been proven. The track record is proven over and over and over again. Amen. Let me tell you how close of a Lord we're dealing with, Brother Steve. In Matthew chapter 1, the Bible says, when the angel makes the announcement of who he is and what he's going to stand for, he says, you will call his name Emmanuel. Yes. And that is interpreted God with us. Hallelujah. Friend, listen, just because Jesus is no longer physically on this earth, 
Don't think for a solitary second that He's not with you. He said, when I leave, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost who will remind you of the things that I've taught you. And lo, I'll be with you to the end of yes. the age. Yes. Yes. Now, why is that important? That's what we call the Holy Ghost collateral there, friend. But that, that the Lord has said, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost of God to comfort you. And that's exactly what it means. How many times have you been in a situation? This happens to me all the time. Come on. Where I haven't thought of a particular verse of Scripture for some time. But all of a sudden, I'm in a situation where I need that fresh word from the Lord. Yes, sir. And that verse comes to the forefront of my mind. Yes, sir. Now, friend, that is just a, one of many aspects of the working of the Holy Ghost in your life and my life. That's right. That's good stuff. Amen. And so here he is. He's been encouraged by friends. He's met some new friends. All of this is wonderful. Hey, he's even seen converts, beginning in verse number 7. Gentile converts. But as is often the case, the Jews are dogging his steps. Some have even followed him across different city lines and boundaries to continue to harass the Apostle Paul and try to make his life miserable. This happens all the time in the life of the Apostle Paul. Now, we might say, listen, I, I might go to the Lord and say, Lord, I just can't take anymore. I'm going to take an early retirement. Can I tell you, there's no early retirement in the ministry. <laughs> Once you're called, you're called. You keep on the fighting line, yes, as the sir. old sermon, or as the old hymn says. Good preaching. Now watch this. So he, he might uh, even have a little self-pity. We've done that from time to time. You ever felt sorry for yourself? It does you no good. But we like, to, we like to do that from time to time. Take that self-pity to the Lord, friend. Amen. Watch this in verse number 9. Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision. Now friend, I want to remind you that again, the Lord doesn't speak audibly unto us today. But you've got to keep in mind that the, the Apostle Paul was just that. He was an apostle. That's right. That office of apostle was set up because the word of God had not yet been completed. Yes, sir. And so they needed verification from these men who came and said, I'm a representative of the Most High God. Okay, prove it. Well, I can perform miracles. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, I'm in the process of being given direct revelation to complete his New Testament. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. But until that is closed, and I'm a spokesman of his, and I'm an, I'm an apostle, which is, by the way, here's a simple definition of what an apostle is. One who's been directly commissioned by Christ himself. Right. So you got people running around today calling themselves apostles. That's not real. Yes, sir. That's because right. the office of apostle closed with the apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. Now, having said all of that, though, even though the Lord God doesn't speak to us audibly, friend, you have, again, to remind you that this book is not just some ancient relic that's meant to sit on the coffee table and collect dust somewhere. That's right. That's right. Now, I'm going to use a cliche and, a, and a, a phrase you've heard again and again, but it bears so much truth it's worth repeating over and over again. Amen. And that is a Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to somebody whose life is not falling apart. That's yes, right. sir. Amen. So pick up the Word of God. Read it. Have time with it. Study it. Study to show yourself approved as the Word of God says. Amen. Get to know the Lord. Can you imagine if I'd gone out on one date with my wife and then said, well, I'm going to marry you, not knowing anything about her, not knowing anything about her likes or dislikes or anything else about her personality, but I got to know her in the courtship process. I got to know her in that time of, 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 of bonding and so forth and so on. And on a much grander scale, how important it is if we get to know our spouse and, and love them and care for them or any of our family members or, or close personal friends how much of more importance is it to get to know the Lord God who's redeemed us? Amen. That is so vitally important. And we lose sight of that because we say, well, I'll go down to the church house on Sunday and I'll, I'll worship there with friends and then I'll go home and that's the extent of it. Hmm. No, friend, this is, this is what I was talking about earlier. This, this is the huddle hmm. at halftime. Yes, sir. To get all the information that you need so that you can go out those doors and live the Christian life with success and encouragement. Amen. That's right, Amen. preacher. And this is not some kind of pop psychology mumbo jumbo. This is the word of the living God. Amen. Amen. Verse 9. Do not be afraid. Which implies what? That Paul was afraid. Right. Yes. You say, boy, that doesn't sound like Paul at all. Well, listen. Again, he's a human being. Yes. And his objective is to point others to Christ and the goodness of Christ and how the Lord cares and comes to the, the aid of his own. 
Do not be afraid. But rather what? Speak. Yes. Amen. Do not keep silent in verse number 9. You know what this tells me? It tells me that not only, and I'm just reading between the lines here, I can't be dogmatic about these things, but I'm, I'm, I'm going with the implication of what the Word of God is telling me. Mm -hmm. Do not be afraid implies that the Lord God knows the hearts and thoughts of every man, so He must have been afraid. Mm. Right. And then to continue to speak and do not keep silent, there must have been some wrestling in the mind of Paul to say, maybe yes. this is the end of the line for me. Yes. Mm. I've been in some bad places. Corinth, Lord, yeah. you're going to take me to the filth of Corinth, the cesspool of all humanity. Right. Friend, I'm going to tell you something. I've sat across people in my office over the years that I've been a minister. People have said to me, surely God could not forgive me. The things I've done and seen and the wrong I've done to people, there's no way that God could forgive me. But He does. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you right now, there's not a person alive who's beyond the grace That's right. of the Lord God. Hallelujah. Hey, you might, hey, listen. Right. You might say today, Brother Steve, you might hear this from somebody yourself. Listen, I'm too far gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's not such a thing. That's right. For the one who leaves the fold, leaves the 99 to find and rescue the one and bring him back. Into Thank, the fold. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. That's Jesus. Hey. That is Jesus. Yes. The great shepherd. Why is he called a shepherd in Scripture? I heard a Christian comedian say years ago, why could we be, be compared to lions or something a little tougher than, than, <laughs> than a sheep? You ever been around sheep? You can just kind of do this at a sheep and they're going to take off running. They're very <laughs> scared of their own shepherds. Right. There's good reason we're compared to sheep and he's the shepherd. Mm. We need constant care. That's, yes, sir. Guidance. Yes. yes. Understanding. Mm -hmm. Encouragement. Man, that's good. Refreshing. Yes. You know what I tell my people at Beulah all the time? I love this verse. His mercies are new every morning. Thank you, Lord. you wake up in the morning, it's a fresh start, amen. Don't worry amen. about yesterday. Yesterday's gone. Right. You've dealt with those sins. God's dealt with them there in the past. Hallelujah. You're on the bottom of the sea of forgetfulness. Thank you, Lord. As far as the east is from the west, my friend, this is a new day amen. and a new opportunity for service to the Lord. That's amen. right. Are you discouraged today? Is there something that's dragging you down? If you're like me, there is. Or it's, as I mentioned earlier, it's just around the corner. Mm -hmm. Hang on. But continue to walk with the Lord God. Mm. Now watch this. Do not be afraid. Again, which implies that he was afraid. Speak. Do not keep silent. Keep on doing what you've been doing all of this time, Paul. Why? Well, because... I've called you to it. Amen. Now watch this in verse number 10. Now friend, this, this will really give you what Brother Don Patterson calls glory bumps. <laughs> All right, watch this. Verse 10. For I am with you. Oh, but that's not all. I'm not a Greek scholar, Brother Steve. I know just enough to be dangerous. <laughs> all right? But I'm going to give you a Greek lesson here. In the original Greek language, there's a word it's not in this translation, the King James, or the New King James in my case here. I'm, I'm reading from the New King James. But, but the idea is still there. It's not as if the, uh, the intent was to strip the Word of God in the, in the King James translation. But it's, it's often good to go back and look at the original Greek language for this very reason. Right. There's a little word. I'm going to give, I'm gonna it, give it to you here. Verse 10, for I myself Hallelujah. am with you. That's good. Now let me tell you what that one little word, what a game changer that is. Because what is implied in the word myself, that one little word, everything that's wrapped up in that word is everything that God is. Amen. A comforter, a strong tower, a mighty fortress is our God. Amen. Now listen, it's not just in the, on the basis of encouragement alone in terms of bringing us out of, uh, of the blues or despair. But it's a twofold aspect. I myself am with thee, which means if nobody else is with you, and this is what I'm going to share with you in a moment from 2 Timothy chapter 4, even if nobody else is with you, that doesn't matter. If you're the only one standing and ministering for the Lord Jesus Christ, mm. then keep going, brother. Yes, sir. Keep going, sister. 
Amen. Because if God has called you to it, as the old saying says, He'll bring you through it. Yes. Amen. That is, that is, listen, Amen. that's Bible 101. That's and the Lord God is never, ever going to leave, never going to forsake. And we're thankful that He, that he does not. Amen. We'd be in a fix if He did to say, well, you're saved. Good luck with that. I'll see you on the other side. No. But that's not what he said. Thank you. Lord. We have the, the, the power and the energizing of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and lives. We have, again, Emmanuel, God with us directly. Amen. Hallelujah. For I myself am with you. You preach it, brother. And no one will attack you to hurt you. Amen. Now you say, wait a minute. You just told me, brother, brother Matt, that Brother Paul was, uh, he had had all sorts of, he even says later on, I bear the marks in my body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. What that means is, he says later on, I've been whipped with a rod of iron three separate times. Right. That was no uh, slap on the wrist. That was being beaten half to death. We talked about him being stoned half to death earlier and how he got up and kept preaching. There was just no quit in him. Even when there were times of despair and setbacks, he got encouragement from the Lord God and you will also yes, to sir. keep doing what is necessary for kingdom work. And again, that doesn't mean everybody's a preacher or pastor or evangelist. But as a Christian, Amen. you have a duty yes, sir. and a responsibility, watch this, to share your faith with a lost and dying world. That's Amen. exactly Amen. right. Listen, if you don't, it's like saying there's a bill due, you put the address on it, you write the check, stick it in the envelope, lick the envelope, put the stamp on it, and it sits on the table. The bill's never going to get paid if it just sits on the table. You can dress it up how you like, right. but you've got to put it in the mail to pay the bill. Good. And Good. so the bottom line Amen. is, as children of the Most High God, you've got all of these things at your disposal. Amen. And we sit on our hands, and sometimes we, we squander things away, and we say, oh, I know God has power. I know He's the same God in my life who opened the Red Sea for the children of Israel to go on dry ground. Oh, I know the stories of the Bible. He's the same God who calls the sun to stand still for Joshua. Yes, sir. Oh, he's the same God who shook the prison doors open for Paul and Silas. Right. And then we get stuck in our doubts mm -hmm. and say, yeah, but this is an issue that God can't fix. Come on, mm -hmm. Now, we might not ever say that out loud. Yeah, right. You know, we say, well, if I don't say it, it's not real. But you're thinking it. Yes. And God knows what? The intent of your heart. Amen. You better take those honest doubts to him That's right. like John the Baptist did. John the Baptist, Jesus said, the greatest man ever born of women. Mm -hmm. He sat in prison. And he sent one of his disciples to Jesus and said, well, you go and ask Jesus. Is he really the one? Yeah. yeah. Now, let me tell you this. Jesus didn't go back and scold him. Thank you, Lord. That's he right. said, you go back and tell John. Amen. Amen. The blind are seeing. That's yes, right. The deaf are hearing. That's right. The lame are walking. Amen. The kingdom of God is advancing. Amen. Remind John the Baptist why yes. he started yes. what he started as the forerunner of Christ to begin with. Yes, sir. Yes. And don't you know, even though John lost his head in prison, literally, don't you know he never forgot that when Jesus Amen. sent word back? Hey, right. You remind John that the things he preached and taught and paved the way as the forerunner, they're coming to pass. Amen. Friend, don't you ever lose sight of the power of God? Amen. Don't you ever lose sight of the fact that he's the God who owns the cattle on a thousand hill? That's right. And what he's going to be able to do for your life? Well, friend, Brother Terry stood up and gave testimony about how the Lord is continuously blessing and blessing year after year after year. Mm. And that takes faith. That's right. It takes faith to step out and say, Lord, I trust you no matter what. Amen. And you've got people who say, I need to see to believe. Friend, listen, we have all of the record we need in the Word of God. Amen. Because it's proven again and again and again. And the revelation that hasn't yet come to pass, based on the proven track record of the Bible, it will come to pass. Yes, Amen. Amen. That's right. So don't be afraid. Don't hold back. Don't be silent. You keep doing what you've been called to do. Mm -hmm. Why? Here's the kicker. For I myself am with you. Amen. And here's what I was getting to a moment ago. And then I started chasing some spiritual <laughs> rabbits over here. You know what that's like, though, Steve. <laughs> keep me on ta task here. Good preaching. Yeah. No one will attack you to hurt you. Yeah, he was beaten in every way. What the Lord has in view here is that your life is not going to end until I say it's time. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's appointed when a man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. That's good. Only God knows that. That's right. That's right. And you know what? There's only one person that I can tell from God's Word who ever said uh, that he knew when he was going to die, and that was Simeon, after Jesus was born. 
He was promised you will not die until you see the Lord's cross. Amen. And when he scooped that little baby up in his arms and he said, Lord, now I can die. Your servant can depart in peace. Amen. But outside of that special, special revelation, friend, we don't know the time of our expiration. Don't you want to keep working and plowing for the Lord, planning and watering Amen. so that His will can be accomplished yes. through you? Amen. You know, sometimes as a pastor, I know, Brother Steve, you feel this way. I've talked to a number of pastors over the years. We, we get down sometimes. <coughs> Attendance might be down, and we look at that, and we kind of judge ourselves based on those things. But it's those sweet times when somebody comes to your office or they come up after the service and they say, you know what, God used you to minister to me today. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you think, you think to yourself, well, I've been feeling sorry for myself this week. Attendance has been down or I, I invited five people to church and not a one of them showed up and you're just down in the dumps. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you've had some other difficulties. And the Lord always has a way of showing you that He's still in charge. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. And he still has you in this spot for a reason. That's why Paul would come to the end of his life and he would say, it's time to end it. But I've kept the faith. I finished my course. And he did. Did that come without setback? No. There were plenty of those. I love the fact that the Bible never promises that the Christian experience is going to be a cakewalk. Right but that He would be with us through the hardship. That's exactly right. We are in the sheepfold. Amen. Yes, sir. With our eyes on the shepherd. Amen. And so nobody's going to take your life until it's time, Paul. This happened to the Lord Jesus very briefly. I'll share this with you, and then I want to take you over to 2 Timothy chapter 4 as we get ready to round things up here. But uh, There were times where the Lord escaped persecution in a physical form. A couple of times in the Word of God in the Gospels it tells us that Jesus escaped death, stoning, and different things because it wasn't yet His time Amen. to be crucified. Nobody knows. Mm. But the Lord knows. Mm -hmm. And so you be faithful until the very end. Mm. That's one. It's hard to do. Crazy. Corinth was a cesspool. America's becoming likewise. Yes, that's right. It's a rotten place where some of the things that I look at and, and see from week to week that come through, I subscribe to these ministries that um, are kind of watch, watch ministries and they're always warning the churches of trends that are coming. Mm -hmm. And the things that are creeping into the church slowly. Mm -hmm. And that's the subtlety of Satan. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, the half-brother of our Lord Jude wrote a little book just before Revelation, tucked away in the back of the Bible. Powerful little book. That's right. And he said, there be some among you who have crept in unaware. Mm -hmm. They don't come in and announce themselves as Satan's agents. No, no, they won't do that. They come in and they disguise themselves as angels of light or messengers of light. Yes. So that they can infiltrate the church. Mm -hmm. That's why it's very important that we stay the course. Amen. And be on That's guard right. and know what's out there and know what's harmful and know what thus saith the Lord. Yes, sir. So that you can combat these issues. Good preacher. That's right. Amen. Now, here it is. And I'm, I'm about to get to 2 Timothy 4. And that's just kind of a footnote verse I want to share with you in just a moment to tie these things together. Here's the last point the Lord gives. And then I love verse 11 that we'll talk about here in just a second. Not only am I myself with you and want you to continue to speak and be bold and not keep silent. And not only is no man going to take your life because, again, that's not a promise that you won't have physical setbacks. Oh, he did. The shipwreck, the snake bite, you name it, Paul had been through it. But I have many people in this city. Yes. Mm. Wonderful. Oh. Friend, if, um, if, we, if we just quit, first of all, if, if we quit, God's got a faithful remnant. Mm. Mm. Amen. Right. I'm reminded when uh, Paul and Barnabas first set out on their first missionary journey, John Mark went with them. Mm. And John Mark, the same person who authored the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark, he took tail and ran about halfway through. He got to the Taurus Mountains. He said, there's robbers in these caves. I'm going home. Yeah. And later on, Barnabas said, let's take uh, Mark with us for our next missionary journey. And Paul said, I don't think so. 
He's a coward. Yeah. He retreated. Later on, by the grace of God, by the way, um, just to finish out that story, kind of tie, tie that loose in, Mark and Paul are reunited. Because Paul's in imprisonment, and he says, bring Mark with you. Amen. For he's profitable to me for the ministry. Amen. So, my friend, listen, even if you retreat and you've quit the past, I want to encourage you to get back in the saddle. Yes, sir. Amen. That's good. I want to encourage you to hit your knees and ask, Lord, what is it that I am supposed to be doing for your kingdom? Amen. I, I walked through with my church about a year ago a spiritual gift test and surveyed all of those things because we've all got either at least one spiritual gift. Right. Sometimes we have more than others uh, and sometimes they might overlap, whatever. Right. But you've got one if you're a child of the Most High God. That's right. Yes, man. yes sir. Is it rusty, collecting rust, or are you using it for the power of God? Think about these things. For not only I myself am with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you, but I have a great many people in this city. What does that mean in verse 10, I have many people in this city? Does that mean there's some allies hiding out that you haven't found yet? No, there are souls that are going to be saved in this wretched place. Hallelujah. <laughs> Wonderful. You ever been in a place you said, nothing good would ever come from here? <laughs> and lo and behold, the Lord works a miracle yes, because the Lord sees Amen. what's going to happen. Amen. Not just as a spectator, by the way, just watching things unfold. <laughs> but I believe very strongly in the, in the sovereignty of God that He orders all things. Amen. He says, I've got a great number of people. Here's, here's where it all kind of comes together. And then I want to take you to 2 Timothy 4, 16 through 18. And he continued there a year and six months. That's a lot longer than he stayed in, in most places. Eighteen months mm. preaching the Word. Why? Because people were being converted to salvation. Hallelujah. People yes. were getting saved. Mm -hmm. Paul had that jump start that he needed. And sometimes we just need a reminder, don't we? That he's still on the throne. Amen. Amen. And we, look, we survey the landscape of, of, for example, our culture in America, and we say, we're fighting a losing battle. Mm -hmm. and I'll remind you of what Jesus said. The gates of hell will not prevail against my word. That's right. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that today? Amen. Yes, sir. Let that be an encouragement to you. Good. Go with me to 2 Timothy 4, beginning in verse 16. And then we're going to have a time of invitation. 2 Timothy, also uh, or written by the Apostle Paul. Of course, Luke wrote the, the, the book of Acts. But Paul goes on to write over half the New Testament. And um, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. I love these verses. At my first defense, he's, he's speaking of his first Roman imprisonment. No one stood with me. Okay? That's pretty bad. Everybody just took mm -hmm. tail and ran. Right. All for certain. And I love the, the forgiveness of Paul here. It may have not be laid to their charge against them. That's mm. good. But verse 17. But the Lord stood with me. Amen. And he strengthened me. Amen. Do you have any strength of yourself? No, you don't. Mm -hmm. Don't buy into the lie today that is told, even in so-called churches today, that there's some good in you. Yes, uh, you're right. Paul said, there, I have no reason to boast except for Christ and His deliverance in me. Amen. That's it. We are nothing apart from Christ. Do we understand that? Amen. Has that gotten through to us? That's good, preacher. He stood with me, He strengthened me, so that the message might be preached fully through me, His agent, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Now, that's not a literal line in terms of he wasn't shoved in a lion's den as Daniel was. But he's using that metaphorically to talk about some dangerous situation or, or some trial and some difficulty. And the reason I, have, I think the Lord would have me to have you turn here today and show you this to kind of tie up everything is to show you that it wasn't just once that you can count on the Lord. And I mentioned this earlier. It's not like when you get saved, the Lord says... Best wishes on your journey in this okay. earth. Yeah. I'm going to turn you loose. No. That'd be horrible. Yeah, it would. Mm. Yes. Why? Because I'm a human being. Mm. 
I'll get down 30 seconds later and forget what my motive was and my objectives. That's what my little pea brain is thinking about. Woe is me and what am I going to do now? We need the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, we do. And friend, as a child of God, there is no shame in depending on Him. That's right. Amen. Because we have nothing without Him. That's right. Friend, let this message be encouragement to you. I'm going to pray and then just give a brief introduction to the altar call. And then Brother Steve is going to come. And if you come down for prayer and Brother Steve may be praying with somebody, you want somebody to pray with you, I'll step up and pray with you. But let's bow before the Lord before we get to the invitation. Father, I'm so grateful to have been here with this congregation today. I'm thankful for the encouragement, Lord, that we see. And this is just one of many verses that we can read about how the Lord strengthens and encourages. But Lord, to know that you're there is one thing. To tap into that as a great resource, as a divine resource, is something completely different. We can know you're there. We can say we believe that all the day long. But until we actually give it over all to you, Lord, and stop trying to handle our own problems or feel sorry for ourselves, well, Lord, we're just going to sit in that state of mind and be of no use to your kingdom. But I pray today, Father, who knows, you may be calling uh, the next pastor, teacher, evangelist, Sunday school leader, Right. right here in this very congregation today, January 22nd. Yes. And there may be one under the sound of my voice, Lord, who's been gripping the pew, so to speak, and say, I, I know I'm supposed to be serving. I know what my gifts are. But I'm just not doing it. Hmm. You might feel inadequate, friend. Well, you are. Right. You are inadequate. Sure. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is not. That's right. Amen. He provides the strength and the tools necessary. God, we thank you for these things. We thank you for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Yes. Who constantly reminds us of the things that you've taught. And inspires and keeps us going forward. Where we failed you, Lord, forgive us. As a church, as a nation, as a people. And we seek after your face. Yes. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Friend, if you're here today and you're facing discouragement, I know this sounds like, well, this is what preachers are supposed to say. <coughs> I've been through it. I've been through a lot of things. We all have. <coughs> if we were to stand and give testimony about the things that we've been through, we'd be here till tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But also to talk about the goodness of God. David was a lot like that in the Psalms. He'd say, you know, there's people seeking after my life and he was a wanted, marked man most of his days. And then he would always circle back. He would talk about the bad stuff. And then he would circle back and say, but the Lord <laughs> has provided. Or he would talk about the mercies of God and how the Lord has always answered prayers and so forth and so on. Hmm. It's okay to let the bad times and the discouraging times be a catalyst, but don't sit in it. That's right. Amen. Allow it to, to, to forge you on through the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. So that you can do what's necessary for the kingdom. Because there's nothing more miserable than a child of God who knows what he's supposed to be doing or what she's supposed to be doing. And they're not doing it. That's right. Brother Steve. Amen. Church family, I want to ask you if you'll stand with me, please. Stand in an attitude of prayer. Jaden, if you'll play the invitation song. 